Hello to this wonderful session with Pamela Rice with over 6 million info, um, followers on Instagram and over 5 million subscribers on YouTube. She is Germany's most successful fitness influencer. She has also launched an own food brand and now she is under 30 list maker. And um, Pamela, it's so good to have you here. It's always a pleasure talking to you. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. So before we start the session, just one thing. Feel free to ask questions at any time during the session via the Slido live chat box next to the screen. Um, so we will have a chance to discuss them after the session or at the end of the session. So Pamela, um, you were already speaker at our last training summit in Zurich. And a lot has happened since then, um, especially during the pandemic. You've entered the Chinese market. So how has that happened? Um, so basically, a Chinese follower of mine came up to me in the street and showed me, have a look, your videos are actually popular in China. I was like, okay, but I'm not in China. I've never posted something in China because they do have other social media platforms. They do not have Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, etc. They do have like Chinese substitutes for it. Um, so basically, copycats were uploading my videos, my sports videos over there, and they had millions of views. Um, so I said, okay, why don't we do this ourselves? And um, then I contacted some people who I knew that they have connections to China, etc. And then I built like a tiny team of that girl coming up to me on the street. She's helping me with the translations for the videos. Another one is helping with the uploads. Um, and that kind of started in June. And by now I already have, I think, five or six million followers in China as well. And we basically mirror the content from Europe to China, and it works. Amazing. So you've mentioned one important aspect in your workout videos, and you create them by your own, and also you create every week your workout plans, which you share for free. So um, tell us, what, haven't you ever thought about charging them? I think that was maybe, um, I think that was maybe, the little secret behind the hype that I experienced this spring um, is that I always said everything for free. I think that was um, maybe the secret behind everything that I never charged for anything during the pandemic regarding sports. And it was very important to me that I could offer workout videos, which are a lot of work for us. Like we invest so much time in it, but I think it was super important to just give the people a benefit without taking something from them because like the situation in the world and everything was taking so much from us all. Um, so I just wanted to give a little bit of um, sweat, sore muscles and happy faces for free. <laughs> awesome. So what would you say, what are other success factors? Um, in my business? Yes. I do think a big success factor is that I do almost everything myself because um, my followers notice that and I show it and like then as an end result, they know that everything that I publish and do really comes from my heart and I really stand behind everything 100%. And I do think that is well appreciated by everyone. Um, and then maybe just the fact that I always try to do something new. Um, I think a lot of influencers kind of decrease or stayed at one level because they never dared to start something new and I'm always searching for new projects and stuff that I really love that I can also take as a self-development um, and I think that kind of makes it more interesting and fun. I mean I'm, I was starting like eight years ago so you always have to do something new. Yeah you mentioned uh, one important thing you started eight years ago so what are your lessons of the past eight years? My lessons are <laughs> You always have to be very hardworking because um, social media is a very fast medium. And if you decide to take a very long break, that might be totally fine, but that might also bring you to a point of not being in the algorithm anymore, not being interesting anymore, etc. And I noticed for myself, because of course I'm an influencer, but I'm also a follower of other people. And if they just stay the same all the time, it gets so, so boring. Um, and unfortunately, that is really the case. So I do think a big learning was to always keep moving and to make it fun. Like I did things that I thought were important, like business-wise, traveling a lot, 
I mean, I love speeches at Forbes, but I had a time where I did a lot of speeches and I just noticed that um, it took a lot from me personally, a lot of energy. I was always nervous beforehand, etc. And then at one point I started focusing on only the stuff that I really love, cooking from home, sharing recipes, sharing workouts. And if you find yourself within your surrounding and then do the stuff that you really love, I think you will also be way more successful. Yeah. What do you think? How does the future of influencers look like? Um, I do think the future for influencers is very bright because to, like, because of the pandemic, everything is way more digital than before. And I mean, I can really not complain. This year was amazing for me. And I just noticed increases with every single aspect of what I do. So I do think the whole digital world has a very bright future. Yeah. And as I mentioned before, you just launched your own food brand called Naturally Pam. Yes. So how did the idea come around? I mean, I love cooking. I love food, etc. cetera. Um, so it was always a dream of mine to start an own food brand. But that also faces you with a lot of challenges because like having an actual product is nothing digital anymore. You have to produce it, you have to store it, you have to send it, um, you have to have so many insurances um, because it's an actual product that people eat. So it has so many challenges, um, like the packaging has to be designed, produced, where do you produce, if everything is organic, you have to live up to a lot of regulations. So. Um, A whole new world that was opened up to me but I decided the time is now and if I really want to start something like that I should not wait any longer and just do it right away and I have to say it's so much fun yeah um, and I cannot wait like the pre-launch is in the end of this month and then in January we have the big launch also um, not only launching online but also stationary in Germany um, so that's going to be amazing so can you give us a hint, what product will it be and where will you launch in Germany, in which stores or shops? Um, I cannot um, give any hints regarding the shops, but the products, of course, are going to be, in my opinion, healthy. We don't use any cane sugar, no preservatives, colorants, etc. I really want 100% natural ingredients because I think that should be the base of everything that we eat because our body is our temple and we should feed it with natural and good food everything is 100 organic and that was a big and very difficult topic um, everything is packed in the most sustainable packaging possible for that food product and that's actually very difficult because food cannot be in contact with a lot of materials because for example um, my shirt is made from recycled polyester but if something is recycled you do not know the origin and then you most of the times cannot really bring it in contact with food because you eat it you consume it so you really have to know where the packaging is made from um, but we found amazing solutions and some products weren't possible yet because we couldn't find a perfect packaging but um, the whole market is moving moving forward and I do think it will be hopefully a big statement to have um, a food brand which puts a lot of focus on that because basically almost nobody is doing that until now. What's your overall vision with your brand? Will it be like a well-known such as Coca-Cola all over the world? Uh, I actually haven't thought until this point. I am At the moment, I am just focusing on developing and producing and then hopefully selling um, very yummy, delicious and healthy and sustainable products. Um, so at the moment, I'm just focusing on the product range because I really want to um, launch a lot of products next year. I don't want to have two or three. I really want to build a range um, and then we will see where things go. Great. So I think now it's time to have a look at the questions from the audience. Yeah. I'm sure there are many. So let me check on that. Yeah, there is one. So Pam, what's your inspiration? My inspiration? Oh, such a hard one. But I think my inspiration are my dreams. Um, I, of course, do look at other people, what they're doing, etc. But most of the times I see something and then I think like, oh, I have to make this better. Like um, the first product that I'm launching, I was always using a similar product in my cookbook back then. And it never existed with good, like good and healthy ingredients. Like it doesn't exist. And then I was always thinking, man, I have to do this myself. 
and then I do. So sometimes it's just criticism about other things that <laughs> that force me to go a better way. Um, but then it's also just what what I love most that, um, is what I do. Great. So maybe there's another question. Um... If you would have decided to go to university, what would you study? So um, I did a Berufsfindungstest before, which basically analyzes your skills, and it was 90% mathematics. So um, I would have probably studied something with mathematics, but I really didn't want to study mathematics on its own. So I really didn't know. I was always thinking like BWL in Mannheim. Um, but I was very glad that social media worked out for me so well because I didn't have a clear vision of what I want. Yeah. yeah. So another one. How to get this self-confidence? Uh, self-confidence is a big topic and Honestly, I wasn't always so confident because like for my first speeches, my first interviews, I was so freaking nervous. Like I was so nervous. I was sweating. I was blushing. Um, it was always really hard for me. But I do think practice makes self-confidence. When I do something for the first time, I'm always, always nervous and not so self-confident. But by now, I'm really, I do have a lot of practice with what I do and I don't have to think about the stuff that I say or do just because they became so natural to me. Um, my whole life, my whole job revolves around me so I don't have to, um, so I don't have to do something that I don't want to, I don't have to say something that I don't stand behind. So everything I do is so natural to me that I'm just amazed that people like me for what I am. Um, and that's a wonderful feeling. And with that, my self-confidence also grew, I guess. Yeah. So let's have a look. We have a little bit of time left. Did you have a mentor? No. A mentor. Um, no, I don't even have a management or something. Um, we basically do everything within our family. My brother helps me a lot with filming the videos. Um, cutting them and then preparing them for YouTube. He also does like creative stuff like the GIFs that we have. Um, he helped a lot with the app that is coming out soon. I'm going to have like a pen app. Um, yeah, so everything is basically in the family and then we outsource lots of things. For example, developing apps, that's really not my specialty. <laughs> so we had an agency doing that. Um, but I never had somebody leading me somewhere or really telling me what's right or wrong. It was basically trial and error for me. Um, but having a stable family was very important for me because I could always ask for help. And I could always ask for um, yeah, just experience from my parents because that also helps a lot. Yeah. So, um, oh yeah, this is a good one. What was the hardest decision you've ever had to make in your business? The hardest decision I've ever had to make? Um, let me think about that. To be honest, everything was kind of a good flow. Like I never, I was never standing at one point saying, okay, I have to go this or this direction. Um, but I do think I did have some difficult situations internally business-wise because I was not always in that setup um, in like the business background. And sometimes you start a project with one company and then you just feel like it's not feeling right. Like my Bauchgefühl is not super good. And then you have to end it at a point where it's already very far in the process. And that those are hard decisions. And that happened to me a couple of times. No, really. um, but then in the end, I always think that if I launch something, it's going to exist for so many years in this world. I have to tell it to my followers. I have to sell it. I have to do interviews about it. So I really have to feel 100% happy with it. So if the setup behind um, isn't what I really love, then the product can never be so amazing in the end. So yeah, those were hard decisions. But that was never anything that I um, published on social media. I always tried to keep this part away from... Um, what I published because yeah. what do my followers care about this business problem <laughs> <laughs> so at the end I just want to ask you one last question to create an elegant shift to the next session 
Um, you are now an under 30 list maker, so uh, how do you feel about it? I was actually so happy about it. Um, I don't really know why, but it was always a dream of mine. And when I was 19, I once thought, okay, I have to write a list of things I want to achieve. I never did that ever again, but I did it when I was 19 and I wrote down, I want to be on the Forbes list. Actually. Uh, really? Really, <laughs> really. And when I saw that I am on there, I was like so happy and I was almost getting emotional. And then I was running upstairs to my parents and like, I'm on the Forbes list. And then they said, of course you are. Did you expect anything else? I was like, just party with me. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it was very special to me. So yeah. So thanks, Pam, for taking the time Thank for this for interesting session. I hope you guys out there enjoyed it as much as I did. So um, yeah, we'll see us um, in the next session, the Under 30 panel. Thank you, Pam.